Good day, welcome to another edition of Spotlight on Brewster Schools. Eric Gross, your host, along with Superintendent of Schools, Valerie Henning Piedmont. And Val, it's hard to believe March is here. April, May, graduation is right around the corner. I've referenced June 16th on more than one occasion this week. <laughs> have you really? I have. Um, I, you know, as, as you know, I've been spending some time talking to the seniors and trying to, you know, get as much information as I can from them that would help our district to just improve upon what we do in terms of experiences for students in clubs or courses or, you know, what they need in order for them to feel as though, you know, they're prepared for that next chapter in their lives, whether it's college, work, or military, or mm -hmm. anything in between. Sure. And so when we referenced June 16th, that's around the corner, and for some of the students, they're surprised. I said, that's not far away. Yeah. So there's a lot going on and, you know, the sun shining more often than not. So it's, 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 it's wonderful to see spring around the corner. The budget is right around the corner as well. How are things coming along with that? Well, as you know, um, many of the districts are, um, you know, disappointed at the level of state aid that, that we received. Uh, in, in Brewster, we, we only received a 1.7% increase in our state aid. Uh, as you know, uh, at, at the same time, there's an 8.5% increase in TRS contributions. Uh, and then there's an 8% increase in health care costs. And those two variables are ones that we have no control over. So when we get our state aid, we also, you know, it's, it's gone before it's even here because of, of those other, you know, costs in, in, in establishing a budget. So we have to look at everything. We have to look at, you know, all the ways in which we're trying to, you know, advance our strategic coherence plan to prepare, to better prepare children for this century and, you know, with those important skills of critical thinking, problem solving, you mm -hmm. know, uh, 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 perseverance and so forth. So it's, it's, you know, we're still looking and we're, you know, looking at ways that we can obviously remain below our, the tax cap because that's you know that's the watermark that we all have to make sure that we honor uh, but at the same time we want to continue to, to, to build upon this wonderful school district and of course the Board of Education is meeting bi-monthly now on getting ready for that budget vote coming up in May get involved come to the board meetings and if you can't it's on the cable television it's on the website so just uh, become part of the process. And it's so so important because it's it's a transparent process. Yeah. The presentations are very detailed. The most recent presentation had to do with facilities and transportation and the the cost associated with you know uh, not only maintaining the, the the services but also maintaining the fleet. You know, making sure that we don't find ourselves having a, a bus on the roads, for example, that you know where the frame is corroded and that sure. the, the corrosion is not so much that the, that the frame will fall off the bus as was described but that you know if that bus was in an accident it wouldn't sustain the, the collision right. so there are really important reasons why we have to maintain our, our, our bus fleet uh, we transport our children you know so many of our children do take the buses so we really rely upon them to be you know functional and and safe you know for every every ride that our, our, our children take on those and obviously our facilities are very important you know there are some things that are coming up we all have to look at you know like we look at our homes you know when Sure. When, do we, when do we think our roof is is going to need to be repaired? When do we think we're going to need to uh, repair pave you know uh, parking lots? You know when or not? Those are the kinds of things that we have to prepare for. And so certainly in the in the coming years, we're going to be talking about a capital reserve so that we can prepare for that, and so that it isn't you know whiplash to our taxpayers when these particular you know uh, sort of just um, uh, 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 items associated with maintaining our facilities you know, have to be uh, addressed. The bottom line, get involved. Again, come to the meetings. They're advertised regularly. If you can't, watch it on TV, watch it on the website. Very, very educational. It is. Congratulations, Grant Cuomo. Brewster's first ever, you heard us right, first ever New York State champion. He's, an, am he's an amazing young man. He's I got a, a chance kid. to spend some time with him the yeah. other day. You know, not only is, he's an, uh, is he a talented athlete, he's a brilliant Academician. He's going to Princeton. He's going to Princeton, and he's a, a he has a great attitude. You know, he's just an all-around wonderful young man, and we're so proud of his achievements. And we uh, look forward to him continuing to do great things, and we want to read about him. You know, in Princeton. Special guest stopped by Brewster High the other day to say hi to Grant. Let's go back and check it out. A New York State champion. You heard us right. My friend over here, Grant Cuomo. 170-pound champion, New York State wrestler, 
Congratulations. Thank you very much. What does that mean to you? Um, it means a lot considering the fact that Brewster's actually never had a state champion wrestling before. And so it means a lot to represent the school. It means a lot to represent myself and my coaches and my teammates and all the hard work that I've put in. I was going to say a lot of hard work. Yeah, a ton. Um, about 12 years of it. So <laughs> paid off. Tom Luby, the wrestling coach. Tom, what, what a thrill. Yeah, it was an unbelievable feeling. Uh, you know, when he won the match, it was just... It, words can't describe, you know, the feelings that was going through me and I'm sure going through Grant. It was it was just such an unreal experience. It was uh, and whole, a great win. The whole Brewster School family, Dean Barardo, is relishing this oh, victory. Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, what could you... What, what couldn't we be excited about? This is great. I mean, you know, Grant comes from a great family. His parents are active in the school community. I mean, that's number one. Grant's put a lot of time in. I mean, I've seen him at wrestling practice for sure, but all those little uh, hours where no one really sees what's going on, you go into the weight room to see uh, the trainer about something, and Grant's in there working with the trainer. Uh, so all these little things, plus overcoming the obstacle of the injury this year. I mean, what more could we say? We're just ecstatic. I'm ecstatic for him. This is this is just a, a really great moment for the athletic program, our wrestling program, our school community. I mean, we're, we're excited. The first state championship in Brewster. Correct. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm just as, you know, it's a, at a loss for words, really. I'm going to be for a loss for words. <laughs> what are your plans for the fall? Um, for the fall, I'm heading off to Princeton University to wrestle. Um, I, that, that's just, that's just amazing. That's just sort of a, a cherry on top. It's actually been, I guess, a goal for, for my whole life ever since I started wrestling was to sort of use my wrestling as a bit of a, a, uh, a pathway towards a, you know, to, towards a college, a college career and a college, um, a college education such as that one. So that's really exciting as well. Well, wish you the best of luck. Thank you. And once again, congratulations. Thank you very Grant much. Cuomo, New York State's first champion from the Brewster School District. And talking about athletics, the Brewster High School girls ski team brought home the gold as well. Well, Sophia is, Lester is amazing, and Keegan O'Connor is amazing as well as, as athletes. You know, it's so wonderful to see that our uh, school district has so much to offer for children who are interested in so many things. So I, congr I congratulate these two young women for doing outstanding, amazing, you know, uh, being, being outstanding and amazing athletes and, and, and who are making our district proud and are, you know, competing, you know, with others who are equally, you know, skilled skiers. And I hope one day that they're in the Olympics. And once again, ladies, congratulations to Sophie Lester, Keegan O'Connor, and sophomore Charlotte Green. Yes, Charlotte. Don't want to forget Charlotte. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along, Mr. Brewster contest raised $60,000 the other night. You heard us right again. $60,000. Almost $200,000 raised for cystic fibrosis research in six years. That's an amazing number. That's an incredible, <clears throat> incredible amount of money. Um, these youngsters, um, you know, these young men, uh, performed, they did skits, they did a number of things for them to be on that stage that included the fundraising that they engaged in. And uh, the, the, the crowning of Mr. Brewster was Mike Bonadano. Couldn't have been a better, you know, Mr. Brewster chosen. He's an outstanding young man. Uh, but just the, the, the philanthropy exhibited in, these, in, the, in what these young people did and that they put themselves out there to do all kinds of ridiculous, hilarious things. We appreciate it. It was very entertaining. But most importantly, we're happy that $60,000 is on its way to Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. And as Val was saying, 60 grand and Mike... Get this, he raised 16000 himself. It's incredible. Really? Incredible it's an incredible, yeah, incredible, yeah. incredible so Mike, dedication to this. Congratulations, congratulations to the entire king and his court. Let's say hi. Mike Buonadonna is wearing the crown of Mr. Brewster these days. Mike, the real winner, is the Brewster School District Salty Hands Club. Save a life of today's youth, sponsored by the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. The 2018 pageant was held the other night, an amazing $60,000, you heard me right, $60,000 raised by these gentlemen. And Mr. Brewster himself raised how much? $15,000. $997, I hear, huh? <laughs> yeah. How'd you do it? Uh, well, I asked, I sent a ton of emails around Brewster. 
Um, I applied for a grant for my dad's job, and I got that for $4,000. Um, a lot of his his coworkers get a a company match, a very generous company match. So whatever they donated to me got matched, which helped a lot, and um, some local companies and stuff. Why though? Why the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation? Well, um, just growing up knowing Brian McPartland, um, I never even knew he had it until I started getting older and realized what this night was all about. And then. Um, it just hit me like how serious it is and everything and I just thought it was a great cause and it brings the community all together and everything so it's a special night. It's a special night what's so amazing is over the years almost two hundred thousand dollars raised by the Brewster School District in the past six years which is truly truly amazing. Let's meet some of your court jesters shall we? Yeah sure. Okay I'm gonna move down the aisle here why don't you introduce yourself? You are, sir. Marco Poljak. Nick Dermer. Uh, Scott Jacobson. Lewis Martin. Ryan Lenahan. Joey Greco. Max Likens. Cole Lambert. And on the other side. Ryan Lynch. Chris Frozell. Tino Cerace. Tim Holler. Brendan Brooks. Mike Charbonneau. Will Banks. Eric Jacobson. And Mike Chabonneau. Mike, well, come on up front here for a second. All right. Handsome guy. All these guys are handsome guys. Why did uh, you get involved this year? Um, well, I'm actually the president of Salty Hands, so uh, Mrs. Laval had really been uh, encouraging us to do it this year. So we got a great group of guys, and I just figured it'd be uh, a really fun thing to do. Was it? Definitely. Now, what kind of activities do you guys wear? The bathing suits, suits, you dance? Yeah, actually, this year I sang a song in Spanish, so that was pretty cool. Um, and then the the dance overall was just a really fun experience. What about you, sir? Yeah, uh, I wore a nice red dress during the dance, <laughs> which was which is good. Yeah. You enjoyed wearing the red dress, of course. What about you, Tino? I wore a nice tutu, <laughs> and uh, I look good in it. So. And you? I had to wear a bathing suit and rip off pants. So you can see it was a lot of fun held. Donald Laval, come on up, Donald. Don is the faculty advisor here and who coordinates this great program year after year after year. You know, it's so amazing that these kids raise this amount of money for the cystic fibrosis cause. It's unbelievable. Every year I say we're not going to reach our goal. And, you know, even if we just raised $20,000, I would be so proud of these gentlemen. But they really do raise the bar, and they are so excited and so dedicated to this cause. I'm, I'm beyond thrilled and so proud of them. And it has been a pleasure to work with all of them these past few months. Well, Zana says these are gentlemen. These are true gentlemen who realize that research will solve problems in the medical field. And the money raised right here in Brewster goes toward that research. Absolutely, yeah. And on Ju in June, we'll do our Great Strides Walk, where all the boys will participate with me and the other members of the Salty Hands Club, and we'll present the cystic fibrosis with the check. Okay. Yep. We'll be there for that as well. Excellent. We're happy to see you there. Well, thank you again. And gentlemen, congratulations. The Salty Hands Club, Mr. Brewster Contest. One of the highlights of the school year each year in the Brewster School District. Well, you know, it's the faculty, it's the staff, it's the administration that helped put the glue together to make the Brewster School District the great district that it is. And three educators, Jason Fiddler, Jessica McCann, and Kate Simmons, have attained the pinnacle by receiving national board certification. That's an amazing accomplishment. It is, because it's above and beyond, and it's all driven and initiated by that person who's seeking national board certification. It absolutely is sort of like the, you know, the gold standard for certification across the country. Uh, we have four national board certified uh, teachers in our district. Um, they are truly teacher leaders. They are the go-to teachers in, in their buildings. They are people that, that we tap to, to uh, engage in various uh, leadership opportunities in the district and hope and encourage them to do so. Uh, so I congratulate Jason, who's a teacher at H.H. Uh, Wells, to Jess McCann, and to Kate Simmons, who are in our counseling department at the high school. So the outstanding work for them, and, and congratulations. And by the way, these four, as Val talks about to date, only 1,600 
of New York State's teachers, and there are more than 265,000 teachers employed in New York State. They're so the distinguished group. Yeah, That's, yeah. And I think that number really you know, symbolizes how rigorous this process is because it's not for the faint at heart. Ladies, gentlemen, congratulations. We have the pleasure of chatting today with three, get this now, three, you heard me right, National Board Certified Educators. We're talking about Jess McCann, Kate Simmons, and Jason Fiddler. Jessica and Kate are guidance counselors here at Brewster High. Jason is a science teacher at the Wells Middle School. Congratulations. Thank you. What does this mean, Jess? National Board Certification. Where does it all come from? Do you nominate it? Do you apply? How does that work? So there's an application process that's very rigorous. It requires you to complete four different components. Um, a, a test, you have to do um, a couple different writing pieces. There's a, a, an observation where you have to record yourself. So it's really intensive. It's certainly um, very time consuming. But ultimately, I think it helped me to become a more reflective and effective counselor because I'm constantly sort of evaluating what I'm doing with my students. Um, and thinking about if what I'm doing is the most effective thing I could be doing with them. So the process definitely helped me to think about that. Well, Jess looks familiar. She was on our show not too long ago as the guidance counselor of the year. Double congratulations <laughs> this year for you. Thank you. Jason, you're a science teacher for 16 years. Right. What does all this mean to you now personally? Uh, well, it was a great opportunity to really enhance my education as an educator and to really improve student learning along the way. Uh, so after teaching this amount of time, it, it gave me a great opportunity to reflect on things like, like Jess was saying, how effective it was uh, in ways to improve. And you know, I really thought it was a beneficial process. And uh, I really hope that uh, you know, going forward, you know, my students will be able to benefit from this. And uh, you know, I look forward to you know, modifying lessons and really improving upon some existing things uh, and becoming you know, a better teacher. Kate, what about you? How many years have you been in the University Schools now? This is actually my 10th year. I started right. at middle school for five years. I was moved to the high school for five years. And um, the opportunity arose where the district was offering some support for this national certification. So we were assigned a woman from Arlington, Mindy Gray, which I think a lot of us owe um, a lot of thanks to yeah. for helping yeah. us through the process and, and really keeping us going because it was very... Uh, difficult and sometimes you really doubted yourself and she kept us moving in a really positive direction. Um, what it means to me is I was, <clears throat> as, a, as a school counselor every day, I kind of go in, you really don't know what to expect sometimes, your calendar might be filled with meetings, so you just are kind of doing a job and there's not a lot of time to pull back like Jess had mentioned and kind of evaluate your data. Well, is this an effective way to reach the students? how to enhance their learning, but also just how to um, com continue to develop professionally. And so when given this opportunity by the district to have that support person that was uh, could help us uh, proofread some things or just help us with some of the, just thinking about how we could do our assignments, um, I felt like we had to seize the opportunity, given that a few of my good friends were doing it. Yeah, so it was really supportive having Kate do it. I knew Kate from the middle school, and it was a really great opportunity to uh, work in a cohort environment right. to really support each other as you know fellow faculty, and, and that really helped, I think, you yeah. know, push through this rigorous process. How does one become nominated for this process? So there's no nomination. Anyone is able to do it. You just have to... Um, you have to basically sign up for this process and then you complete the components and you submit them and then you just wait and wait and wait for your scores and then yeah. finally you you know if you have to redo something or you know if you've achieved your certification. Do you know how many nationally board certified educators there are in the United States? Are we talking about tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands? I think, I think it was about 100,000 um, in, in New York State. Yeah, in New York, 60,000 maybe? No, no. It's, in New York it's maybe 5,000. It's not, it's not so 5,000 in all of New York are the... Uh, I think we were only one of 118 or something. Yeah, for this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, and, and Kate and I were the only two school counselors in New York State. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Well, that's, well, that's <laughs> quite a recognition. 
Well, congratulations once again. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Jess, Kate. Thank you so much. Jason, thank you. nationally accredited, nationally board certified teachers. Three right here in the Brewster School District. Val, that's something to be proud about. You know, it all began, how many years ago? In the summer of 2012, when a young boy in Los Angeles, that board around the house, decided to put something together. Kane's Arcade was born. Kane's Arcade's been an interesting part of the Brewster School District, Frank Lamort's classes, for quite some time now. It has, and uh, I want to thank Mr. Lamort for, you know, continuing to make this an annual event for his students. It's a great opportunity for students to engage in creativity, uh, uh, problem solving, to exhibit perseverance, to, you know, collaborate, because they do work together to build some of these projects. They're passion projects. They come from their own interests. So it, it's very much integrated into where we are now in terms of our focus on these 21st century skills. It's a great makerspace opportunity for children. So they love it. It's, it's, it's just, you know, the building is just a buzz with excitement. And obviously, you know, he's very proud that students have take each, you know, continue to take an interest and do really amazing things that, you know, again, this is what, that's, this is what's in their heads and their hearts. Let's check out some of these games right now on Spotlight on Princeton Schools. Three, two, one. It all began in the summer of 2012, when a nine-year-old boy from Los Angeles got bored being around the house. Kane's Arcade was born. Over the years, Frank Lamort, Michelle Marziotti have continued the program here at the CV Star School. And welcome to the show. Frank, this is, I guess, one of the highlights of the year for these students at the school. Yes, Eric, the students are so excited. I actually got an email this morning from a student who said that she couldn't sleep last night because she was so excited for Kane's Arcade. So the students are very, very excited to uh, host their games once again this year. And what's so special is the high school students, when they graduate, you ask them, what was one of the highlights of your career at the Brewster School District? They might say a field trip, but Kane's Arcade is at the top of the list. Hopefully, hopefully they'll remember this. Uh, the kids put so much engineering and creativity um, and science behind their games that they've learned um, in Mr. Lamort's class. So it's wonderful to see it all come together. You know, Frank, this is little trinkets people find around the house. Nothing elaborate pieces of cardboard and plastic. They put it all together and they have a great time. Yeah, that's the beauty of Kane's Arcade. When it originated, uh, Kane, like, like you had mentioned, um, was bored and just used recyclable materials found around his, uh, his father's auto parts store and built these arcade style games. So it's just a great opportunity for students to use their imagination, their creativity, um, uh, as well as a host of 21st century skills, communication, critical thinking, perseverance, to design these fully functional ar arcade style games. And they're very basic, but um, if you take a look at the games, there's so much math and engineering and science. There's, there's pulleys and simple machines and, and, uh, and scoring points and losing points. Um, it's, yeah, it incorporates so many, um, not only core subject skills, but also, all the, like I mentioned, those 21st century uh, skills that students need to be successful in the future. So it's the three R's, as they say, and then some. Exactly, and then some. And, you know, when the students brought their games in, you see the kids playing them, but they really had to explain to our classes how they were made and the science behind it. So they got to share their, all their learning. Kane's okay, Arcade, okay. another successful year at the Brewster School. Yeah, it's very successful, yeah. You can hear the excitement in the air behind us. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle, Frank, Kane's Arcade, okay, a winner at the CV Star School. You know, the Model United Nations Club started a couple of years ago, and it's just expanded and grown to the point. And these kids now travel to New York City. They travel to Alabama. They travel to our nation's capital. They travel to Philadelphia. What's next? Well, they are very, they're a dedicated group of students who are interested in history. They're interested in discussing history and solving problems using history as a backdrop. backdrop. Um, they are interested in competing and sharing their knowledge, and they are our future, you know, legislators, uh, attorneys, you know, and, and creators. So, you know, uh, I'm very proud of, of the work that Mr. Mullane has done to grow interest in that program. And for our students who, as you can see, you know, in all of our social media, you know, there are lots of photos. They, they work into the wee hours of the morning on a number of these projects. 
projects, and uh, this is a this is one of a number of of, of, of uh, field trips that they've taken in service to uh, Model UN. And uh, they were at Columbia University mm -hmm. extensively. They got an opportunity to meet uh, some diplomats, mm -hmm. you know, and they are going on to the University of Alabama for a reunion. And then I believe they have a trip planned to D.C. Yes, that's what I said, Washington. You know, top things off of this Alabama trip, the Brewster High School delegation took home the best small delegation award. That's the first such recognition the club of the Garner, so that's really wonderful. That's, uh, it, that's amazing, and they continue to, to work on, you know, um, it, you know, topics that are of interest and of importance and have social value, and that's the other component of this that makes it so important for them to continue to do it. So I, again, I thank the students for their interest. I thank Mr. Mullane for leading such an outstanding program. And as you'll hear in our little clip now, the interview, one of the students is a student at Henry Wells Middle School, an eighth grader. Look at that. Who decided to join the club, and he's doing great too. That's, that's what we like to see. Let's meet them. The UN Club's making news again. A number of months back, we talked to the UN Club membership when they visited Columbia University in New York City. Now they're down at the University of Alabama, just returned with, again, more championship recognition. Chris McCarthy, we're going to start with you. Chris is a senior, by the way. We have Nick DiDio. We have Dave Minio, Owen Lennon, who's our middle schooler and Chris McCarthy, as we had said before. So Chris, you're the champion over here. What's happened to the University of Alabama? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually committed to go there next year. That's where I'm going to school next year. Right. Uh, and so uh, last year, because my sister attends the university there, she kind of dragged me down and said, oh, there's a Model UN conference down here. So I traveled down just to like visit her, say hi, have some fun. And I ended up really liking their program. I met I met some really interesting people that were running their program down there. So this year I decided to, uh, I'd go back and I'd drag some of my friends down. So we, we went down, we flew down, some of our parents came too, and we, we had tons of fun and we, we actually did, we did really well. We, uh, we took home two, uh, two awards at the closing ceremonies, then we took home uh, the high school's first delegation award, to, to our knowledge at least. Nick, what about you? Why did you get involved in this club? Um, so it's kind of funny. I first started out this club because my friends were in. I'm like, all right, uh, I think I want to hang out with these guys. But then as I kept going on and on, I started to really like it, how everyone was kind of debating over the more pressing topics of the world and stuff, and how everyone's going on about the things that really matter and stuff and not um, topics that are irrelevant. Dave, what about you, sir? Dave Minio, by the way. Uh, I joined the club because this guy dragged me along with him one day. He's like, oh, you know, you got to join this club. It's great. It's fantastic. So I didn't think much of it at first. And then as I got more involved, it made me into a, a much better public speaker. It made me more confident while, uh, while speaking to others. It got me a lot more informed about the world and what was going on in it. I was able to have better conversations with my family, with my friends. I was able to stay in the loop more. And it was, uh, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. Now, Owen Lennon is a middle schooler. Why did Owen, an eighth grader, get involved in the UN club here in Brewster High? Well, um, back in sixth grade, uh, the, a few high school students came over, and uh, Chris was one of them. They came over to um, see if any middle school students wanted to join the club. And uh, I, I was one of, uh, I think, two kids who wanted to uh, join. So I went, to the first conf or I went to my first conference in sixth grade, and there it was like, a little overwhelming at first, but I realized that the club was a lot of fun and it was very different because you kind of got to simulate like real world problems and stuff that can actually um, make you a better speaker and <coughs> almost like uh, it made me a lot more articulate and it made me more clear when speaking so um, and it also helped me solve problems a little better so I think that uh, this club it really just helped me a lot um, with like the uh, speaking and also it's just a lot of fun. Has it been a good experience then for you? A very good experience. Yeah. And you'd recommend other middle schoolers to get involved? Definitely. Chris, mm, Yeah. what's I, the future? Honestly, I, I think Owen's the future right now. He, <laughs> <laughs> like a, a lot of the club right now is, is seniors. Last year even too, like our, our class than juniors, we we held a lot of leadership positions. There weren't too too many younger kids involved, and we now we have a good amount of juniors who are going to be the leadership next year. But 
Owen and the, the, the incoming freshman next year are really going to be a big part because we've never had a, a middle schooler win an award at an interscholastic conference before. And it was, it was really amazing to see because these conferences are very, very, very competitive. Sometimes you're, you're competing against kids all around the U.S. that take this as a class. They, they're they required in some cases to win awards if they want to get a good grade. We're, we're fortunate enough to not have those restrictions because for a lot of kids this, is, this isn't really something that they, they're great at, but they really enjoy it for, for the, the benefits of joining the club. And so Owen, we're, we're very excited for him to come up to the high school next year and he'll definitely be a leader in the club one day. And what's the future of the club for this year? What's the next What's the next visit? What's the next competition? Um, so our next competition is actually this weekend, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, we leave on Thursday. Uh, it's for a Washington Model UNN delegation. Yeah. So we're going to down to Washington, D.C. to go have a conference there. And when you guys go on these trips, mom and dad go, comes along, or how does that work? Uh, no, usually it's, it's just Mr. Mullane and uh, some other advisors like Ms. Chalmers, Ms. Schumacher. But uh, because this trip was so far, this to Alabama, we just our parents were kind of became the chaperones. So, but we all we did we took it like a normal conference. They they would come in and sit, watch us in. They would give feedback to the to the conference as to how they can improve and everything. So, ultimately, they, they ended up taking on the role of the, the chaperones and advisors. But normally, it's just Mr. Mullane and some other teachers in the school. Okay, we're going to hear a lot of big things about the UN Club, and who knows someday. Secretary General over here? <laughs> Why not, right? Maybe. Maybe. You never can tell in Brewster. The UN Club, one of the many successful programs at Brewster High. Thank you. Our beloved superintendent received a recognition the other day herself. Senator Murphy visited Brewster High. Lovely little ceremony. How did that make you feel? Well, not only he's a friend of the Brewster School. He certainly is. But, you know, to commend you like that, New York State Senate Proclamation. Frankie, just zoom in on that for us. Not that you can see all the whereases and the proclamations and all, but quite an honor bestowed upon Valerie. What does that mean to you? Well, it means that um, my, hit the, the recognition is a model for our students that we want them to do things that are in service to others and to uh, ensure that their energies and efforts are all about improving you know uh, what they're doing and improving the conditions for our children to thrive and be successful in so I had student leaders present there because it, that to me was important for them to see this and to also say you know what if she's doing it then I can do it and I can continue to do it uh, and so and I thank Senator Mur Murphy obviously because he is a, a friend of our school district and you know is doing all that he can do to ensure that we continue to, to develop programs that 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 tap the energies and the talents of our student leaders and offer lots of opportunities for children whether it's summer programs uh, as I had mentioned uh, he's responsible for helping us to have seed money so that we can develop the summer program that uh, right. th that's a partnership between the Brewster Community Learning Center and the Northern Westchester YMCA uh, he uh, also helped us to uh, start the Brewster Community Learning Center again that was seed money to help uh, grow programs that are offered in our district for our seniors for our, our employees for our parents for our children so I can't say enough for um, uh, his generosity to us and and as I said um, um, I hope that he continues to to do all that he can do uh, for the the Brewster Central School District and our children and his message was right to the point he told the students always get involved but most of all do the right thing Senator Murphy He's no stranger to the Brewster School District. We're talking about State Senator Terrence Murphy. And the Senator's with us today, a very important day. A special proclamation being made to our Superintendent of Schools. Terry, welcome to the Brewster Schools once again. Uh, what's the visit all about? Well, you know, we are celebrating Black History Month. And there's uh, you talk about leadership in the community. And this lady right here has been an honor and a privilege to be able to meet and work with very closely with regards to all the different issues that are happening up here in the Brewster area such as whether we just uh, saw our state championship, Grant Cuomo here, to the new leadership, uh, the kids over here, the leadership program that they've started up here. But it all starts from the top down. And when you have leadership like this, Valerie, it has been an honor and a privilege to work with you. Mine and from, well from you, day Senator. one, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, because we had not known each other. It was a phone call, sit in, and then, you know, when you came into the school district, things were kind of a little, a little disarray, and we're trying to help you mm -hmm. out. And you know mm -hmm. what? starts from the top down 
you got great ladies like this that are doing the right thing, we're behind them a million percent. What do you say to the Senator Valerie? Oh, I thank him. I mean, he's right. Uh, every time that I call him or email him or meet with him, he's been extremely, you know, supportive and and gracious and has helped us out. I mean, his it was through his efforts that we, you know, through a meeting, were able to get some seed money to start the Brewster Community Learning Center, which has now grown, you know, by about 700 percent. You know, it's programs for parents, for students, and for our our senior citizens who don't have to go very far. They can come right here and and take their yoga or, you know, painting classes. Uh, we also have a wonderful um, y, uh, a collaboration with the YMCA of Northern Westchester, which again made, was made possible through uh, a, a generous uh, seed money from uh, Senator Murphy. And so I can't, you know, thank him enough for um, always looking out for the children and the, the community here in Brewster. The Senator knows the importance of education, be it from Brewster or Carmel or Mayapak, you name it. And he does what he can he to get that feeling out he does, there. He does. He does. He do, and I think that's what's that's that should be punctuated. He does exactly what he can, and he always comes through. And he understands our needs. He understands what's happening in our district. He understands, you know, that state aid was was you know was very low this year, and yet you know health care and TRS contributions have been higher. So he's going to do all he can. I mean, he's not going to make any promises, but he can do. He's going to do all he can. <laughs> He's going to do all he can to to help us out, and if we and we know that you know and, and you know that's probably as much as we can hope for, and obviously you know we'll be looking to see you know what's c coming up in the future. Handwriting's on the wall, Senator. Yes, sir. Well, it is budget time. We go back up ne next week, and we start with the with the state budget, 163 billion dollars. So I will tell you, I'll be fighting. Uh, tooth and nail to bring as much uh, much needed revenue back home to the 40th Senate District. Keep up the good work. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here, and congratulations. And thank you, Senator. Best. Thank you. Mwah. State Senator Terrence Murphy. It's always great when guests visit the various schools in the Brewster School District and when a children's author comes to town. Wow, that's the pinnacle. And Deborah Oswald visited Henry Wells Middle School not too long ago. She wrote a book. A book called... The Haviland Girls. The Haviland Girls. A book dealing with the old guidepost, if any of you old timers are around there on Seminary Hill Road in Carmel. Quite a, a quite history buff right there. And she wrote this book about the, uh, the, um, the big other building. And she talked to the kids about using newspaper archives to actually write the book. That was her research. And that was incredible. I mean, the book is set in 1918. Mm. Uh, the, it's a 14-year-old girl who's the, the, you know, the protagonist in, in the book. And uh, uh, it's a great history of, of Carmel and this, this area. So, you know, not, you know, the fact that it was set in 1918 is, is not lost on students, but they also know the context. And, and it's important for our children to appreciate history and to appreciate, you know, what's happening in their community and to be able to have someone who's not only coming to talk about something that they've written, but that, you know, they're encouraging them to read and to be knowledgeable, whether they use, you know, print newspaper or digital newspaper, but that's an important lesson to leave behind for our students. Students. And obviously, uh, this is you know this is a tradition at, at Wells H.H. Uh, Wells. They you know there's an author invited you know every year because it's really important for children to interact with people who write and who produce. In this case, this is historical fiction is her genre. So uh, it was exciting, and it's and it's wonderful that it's contemporary and, and that children in terms of it's in this environment uh, and that children have an opportunity to meet someone who's writing and, 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 and being creative. And who knows how many youngsters in that class. We'll be writing books and that. Absolutely. It, the, the, that's why these things are so important because they inspire children and we don't know who they're inspiring. Ms. Oswald, welcome to Brewster. We have the distinct pleasure today to be talking to Deborah Oswald, a teacher at the North Salem School District visiting Henry Wells today. And Deborah is an author as well as being an educator. And she put together a book called The Girls of Haviland. First of all, welcome to Brewster. Thank you. What's the girl, those Girls of Haviland all about? It's about a uh, girl, Jane McKenna, 100 years ago, 1918, uh, daughter of struggling farmers, and she wins a scholarship to the prestigious um, Haviland Seminary for Girls in Carmel, which is based on the Drew Seminary for Girls in Carmel. Doesn't fit in, fish out of water, and gets into all sorts of trouble and comes, in, comes out of it as a stronger... Um, confident young woman. 
Now, I understand that you did your research for the book through old newspaper articles. I did. In the early 90s, I started clipping out uh, articles from the Putnam County Courier, also pictures called A Glimpse Back in Time, and those are the events that inspired the events in this novel. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> now, the book is available? Uh, Amazon and Barnes & Noble online. Is this your first venture into uh, publishing? Yes, it is. I wrote for the uh, Ninham Times, which was a Putnam County magazine in the 90s and the 2000s, but this is the first published book, yes. What's the message you brought the people here, the youngsters here today at Henry Wells? That everybody can write using this great resource of um, newspapers because it, I call it one-stop shopping. You can, you can pull up a uh, newspaper from 100 years ago, find out what the weather was, find out what the Yankees were doing, find out what a price of uh, a loaf of bread was, as well as world events. It's all there for you. And where are these newspapers available? They are available through the Mayapak Public Library online archives as well as Reed Memorial Library has the Courier and Brewster Library has the Brewster Standard, which was in pr publication, I think, through the 1980s. So it's right at your desktop. You can get all of them. That's wonderful. Yes. Fun. What about anybody want to say, uh, what is your name? I'm Emily. Just to come and say hi. <laughs> Emily, hi. did you enjoy the presentation today? Yeah, it was very fun. Why? Um, because she really like engaged us and she asked us a lot of questions. Anyone want to do any writing because of Ms. Oswald's visit today? Yes, <laughs> this young lady right here. And what is your name? I'm Kylie. Why was it such a cool lesson today? Um, because it shows like no matter what, if you just look through history, then you can just make a book out of it and have people enjoy it. Mm. Deb, that says it all. Couldn't have said it better yourself. Yes. Well, again, we welcome you. Thank you. And thank you. No problem. And good luck. Thank you very much. Deborah Oswald here at the Henry Wells Middle School. Thanks so much. Our youngsters, our students in Brewster are involved in the school district, outside the school district, even on the state level. Well, they're, they, our students are interested in participating in authentic venues, so this is a youth leadership forum. Um, I want to congratulate Teresa Carlin and Valerie Sempery for, being a, for representing Brewster uh, High School. There were other districts involved, and obviously they got an opportunity to interact with our uh, legislators. Senator Murphy was there, uh, Assemblyman Byrne, uh, Ms. Sue Serrano, uh, Assembly, uh, Sandra, Assembly uh, Person uh, Sandra Galef, and so it was really wonderful for our students to be able to have to be in an environment with uh, our leaders. Okay, and some scholarships are being offered by the Brewster Carmel Garden Club, great organization that flowers you see around the village of Brewster each spring, summer, and fall. Those ladies do a great job. $500 scholarship, and all they have to do is contact the guidance office. I think it's wonderful, and I want to thank the Garden uh, Club, the, the Brewster Carmel Garden Club, for this generous gift. Uh, it absolutely is important for us to beautify these beautiful properties, and this goes a long way in making sure that this happens. So, again, we want to thank you for your generosity. Uh, just kind of, if you're interested, by the way, in horticulture or environmental studies, contact the guidance office at Brewster High. They have all the information. There. Absolutely. Well, the Brewster School District is endorsing that Million Student March plan for the end of March. Well, well, March 14th is the walkout. Right. And then there is a end of, there's a march in D.C. Right. on the 24th, and then that, there's a march in New York City on the 24th, okay. as I understand. And there may be other marches that I've missed. Yes. But there are a variety of, of ways in which um, young people, parents, and, and anyone is, are, are, are seeking to show their support for um, uh, uh, the students and, uh, and the faculty who were uh, massacred uh, in Florida. Uh, that is what it is. It was a massacre. And um, we um, obviously have children who are very interested in um, uh, showing their support uh, for those 17 people who lost their lives. Uh, there, uh, we have student government uh, who are leaders who are organizing. They met with Mrs. Hoyler. Uh, our community came out of a board meeting to make sure that they uh, that they were aware of what was happening. Uh, obviously, our legal counsel advised us. You know, our, this this walkout is a First Amendment right 
uh, it's protected under the First Amendment. Obviously, it's organized. Um, they, the students have met with Mrs. Hoyler. Mm -hmm. uh, they are, uh, as a result of feedback from the, the most recent board meeting, uh, I'm sure those students uh, are going to be talking and listening, or talking and reflecting on what they heard shared by parents in the audience about you know the venue, you know whether it's outside or inside. So all of those things, though, are are are, um, are are all about our students being interested and engaged in what's happening and being members of the larger society where they're thinking about who they are, what they believe in, and that. If they believe strongly in something, which is what they do, they're trying to change, you know, what happens and, and obviously to, you know, potentially uh, prevent future uh, shootings in schools that cause the lives of innocent children and, and faculty. You know, the word walkout somehow is a wrong word for something like this because, you know, yes, they might be walking out, but they're not going up street, they're not going to the local deli. They want to do something positive. They want to write letters. They want to discuss issues as well as walking out of the school for 15, 20 minutes and coming back like that. Well, they want to do something. They, they want to react to this. Yeah. And, you know, that not that what we, isn't that what ed, being educated is all about, is to be able to take action and to be able to, again, plan and, and, and operationalize and, and make sure that you're coordinating, you know, your efforts. So, you know, there's nothing that we can do to block our students from doing this. But what we can do is to make sure that it's done orderly, it's done safely. Uh, obviously, our SROs will be involved, and if we need additional SROs, uh, that will that provision will be made. Um, we again, I don't, you know, we're we're not sure if it's going to be inside or outside, but uh, every effort will be made to make sure that everything is considered, you know, uh, and and that we, you know, in in the end, help the, the the students who are going to be engaged in this to do the best thing possible. We also have provisions that that are part of the plan that the children made to for students who are not uh, interested in walking out, okay. they want to stay in school, they can mm -hmm. do that. You know, we do have venue, you know, events where you know. Uh, you know, in the event parents are concerned about the loss of instructional time, we have a variety of venues where you know uh, the school schedule is interrupted. Pep rallies is a good example. Sure. We have pep rallies. Our students love pep rallies, right. and uh, the teaching isn't happening during pep rally. We're engaged in the pep rally, right. so it isn't unusual for this to this type of event to take place. And again, we're guided by safety. We're guided by you know um, not infringing upon the rights of students, and obviously our legal counsel is in close contact with us to ensure that we. Do do you know uh, monitor each of our steps and, and and what we say and what we do and that we're not leading this the school district and the the administrators are not the ones leading it it's the student government that's leading it and, and I want to make sure that you know our community knows that because you know we, we obviously are not you know politicizing we're not campaigning for a political party right. this is a way for our children to stand up as their peers are across the country and make it known that they want to end gun violence in their schools and they want to end the killing of their of, 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 of classmates and, and, and or students who are like them as well as, as faculty and staff. And as the date gets closer, more information will be forthcoming. Again, check the website. I'm sure there'll be notes sent home. Will it be inside? Will it be outside? That's still undecided at this time. Absolutely, and, and <clears throat> but all of those chain, all of those events will be well uh, articulated to parents as in the way that we send out notices, which is through our Bears Backpack uh, flyer system. Uh, and and so, if parents have questions, they know they can reach out to uh, the high school principal, Mrs. Hoyler, or Mr. John Clark, who's the principal of H. H. Wells. I understand that while at Wells, there are children who are interested as they should be, yeah. uh, they are not walking out of the building. Right. They clearly are they're, they're going to be able to walk into the PAC, I mean, not the PAC, the auditorium, right. uh, and students who are not participating will be will remain in their classes. So that's what that's the provision uh, at the at the middle school, and all, and all of this was discussed at our recent board meeting. Um, and again, you know, we live in, we're living in, you know, in, 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 you know, troubling times and we all have to listen to each other and we all have to, you know, monitor, you know, processes that we have in place. Uh, we're going to be doing that to ensure that, you know, everything that we're doing from drills to, you know, who, uh, who's at the front door is monitored or uh, the degree to which our doors are, are, there's one, you know, single entry point, which there is. Mm -hmm. So all of the processes and, pre and procedures that we have in place, we will be reviewing to make sure that we're, we there's not something that is missing or a gap somewhere. So uh, that's that's currently underway, and we'll continue to do that. And we will also be able to 
to share information with parents. I have gotten requests from parents to uh, have meetings where they could hear about all the security and safety procedures. And uh, obviously, we began that at, at a recent board meeting. But we'll do that. We'll continue to do that because some of our parents want to know, and we deserve. You know, they deserve our us telling them and, and helping to assure that you know we're doing everything possible to ensure the safety, health, and well-being of every student and staff member in the district. As they say, stay tuned. <laughs> We started the program talking about the beautiful spring weather, but it's still only March, which means it could be that four-letter word. How are we doing on snow days? We have uh, one day left. Okay. So we've used four. Okay. We've used a number of early dismissals right. and uh, delayed delayed <laughs> openings. Yeah, they don't count, but they really help us, yeah. especially oh, the sure. three hours, yes. because some of those three hours could have become a full day. Sure. And so uh, we hope that we turn the corner. Uh, yeah. We have very little time left in February. <laughs> and that we don't have uh, another uh, uh, disruption. But I hear something being said, something a nor'easter <laughs> brewing. And so, but hopefully we'll get, you know, if we need to use the last day, that hopefully it, it won't, you know, push us into spring break, which is the time that if we do have days above five days, which we built into our, our, yeah. count, our, our uh, schedule, that uh, those, the time that is abo uh, above that will be pulled from or taken from the spring break. Not so we're hoping that that, that doesn't happen. <laughs> no one wants that to happen. So for Superintendent of Schools, Valerie Henning Piedmont, I'm Eric Gross. We thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Spotlight on Brewster Schools. Have yourselves a good day, a good weekend, be well. And be well and thank you. Bye-bye now.